covered your favorite podcast with your gorgeous hosts. Manny MUA and, and Lorley. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, you guys. Welcome back. We're back, back, back again on this gorgeous Friday. And it is a gorgeous Friday. Yeah, actually, it's quite a nice day. It's full Friday. <laughs> yeah, it's 75 and physically, and that is yes. <laughs> People are just like literally raining when they're watching it. It like, actually is supposed to rain on Friday, I think. You're kidding. No. Lord, you know that's my pit. It's the oh, rain every let's single get into weekend. It. Wait, let's, let's get, get right into, into it. it. Let's get right into it. But, um, today's rapid fire, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but let me start off with. My pit is that it's been raining every single weekend for the past, I would think, four weeks. It has. That is and true. And it's actually been so annoying because I my peak was that I went down for Easter with my family, just to, like see them for the day. But my pit was that it rained. Did it? It did rain in San Diego. And it was so sad because like my mom had was setting up a like adult Easter egg hunt How for everyone. Because you know she has like this big property. So she's like, I want to do like a big old like Easter egg hunt for like one for the kids and then one for like the adults to so do like a money one or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So like when they started to place the eggs, it started to rain. <laughs> oh, so we ended up like turning it into like a fun no. thing and we still did it even though it was sprinkling and raining. But we were like, this is so annoying. And it's just been pissing me off that it's been raining so much. So for the eggs in your family, like for the adults, so they put a little cashola in there? Yes. Or like little You'll get like a dollar, like, okay. a five, a okay. 20. Ooh, okay. Uh -huh. That's fine. And those eggs, and, or you'll get like little, my aunt was really cute. She put like crystals in one of them like, oh, and some eggs. Like and actual like, like little like things, things, like little trinkets. I love that. So we did. Um, what about the kids? Oh, so it's candy. The kids just get the candy. So, and some money ones, like a couple bucks here and there. Okay, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, it happens. So we were the same. We were kids. We would always go down super down south where all my cousins and like granny and grandpa and all uh -huh. that live. And they would do the same thing. And there would be all, all the eggs would just have some candy in it. But there would always be one egg and they would call it the golden egg. Yeah. And they would take a regular egg and put tinfoil around it. <laughs> and if you found it, that was the egg that had money in it. It'd probably have like five dollars in it. Absolutely, but like but as a the, kid, that's, that's a the million one. dollars, uh -huh. honey. That's a million dollars. Uh -huh. So all of my cousins were such nasty shitheads. They really were. They're like course. shitheads. I'm not surprised. I was very sweet. Uh -huh. My aunt one year put the golden egg in her pocket and everybody's running around getting Ooh, eggs looking. She uh -huh. walks up to me and just drops it in my basket and walks off. No. My aunt Faye, yes. She, she was did. like, you're the good one. Yeah, she knew I would never had a chance of getting it compared With to those, those heathens. Beasts. Those beasts. Beasts. Those are beasts. Beast. So she literally dropped the tinfoil egg and just walked by and put it in a basket. And I was like, ah. and I'm 35 years old and I still, I remember, remember. it was a core memory for me it, it that she did something. that. Yeah, it unlocked, it unlocked something. something. You were like, I'm, I'm going to make it out. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, this I'm is it. getting out of here. I'm getting out. You're like this. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. time for me to go. <laughs> <laughs> that is so sickening. But yeah, there was definitely a money egg that like the kids were hunting for as well. It's really fun. I think that Easter is like a really cute holiday in that way. Even though I know it's about, you know, like he has risen, <laughs> you know. I know it's like a real like What do you mean it's not about eggs? No, I know it's not about just the eggs, but like it is a fun thing to celebrate with family or friends when you can. Like, you know, I love Cadbury cream eggs. So oh, I Okay, y'all, listen, Manny went to the grocery store, and he was, like, posting himself in a grocery store, and he's looking for his eggs. Every year, you do look for those. I do. I do. It's a seasonal. It's seasonal. You love them. You know that. So, I literally DM'd him. I was like, there's no way you <laughs> yes. literally drove to it. Manny and me way went in the grocery store to get these to eggs. And you're like, I need it one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I did do other things, but um, I'm taking advantage. But yes. also, apparently, there's a Cadbury cream shortage. <gasps> What's did you get literal? some, by the way? No. But luckily, like my mom, she, every single year, I'm 30, about to be 33 years old. And every year she gives us Easter baskets. Like, doesn't matter. It will always happen. And there's always Cadbury cream eggs in mine. So I have four at the house. One thing about Greca, she never misses. She doesn't miss. She that woman misses. don't miss. She never misses. She's too good. Like, she's too good. And so she, I have four Cadbury cream eggs at the house right wow. now. Wow. And I did. Uh, I'll be eating one every single day. Indulge yourself. <laughs> yeah. Thank you to Bond Charge for sponsoring this portion of full coverage. I don't know if you guys have heard of Bond Charge before, but they are a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life in every way. And they have this red light face mask that I have been really enjoying. The cool thing about it too is that it's easy to return in exchange if you do not like it. And there's a 12 month warrant on all red light therapy devices. You guys can go to bondcharge.com slash full and use code full to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash full and use code full to save 15 percent 
Thank you so much to Shopify for sponsoring this portion of Full Coverage, you guys, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell, online, in person, social media, and beyond. So stop leaving sales on the table, switch your business to Shopify, and discover why millions trust Shopify as their all-in-one commerce platform to build, grow, and run their businesses. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash full coverage, all lowercase. That's one month for $1 at shopify.com slash full coverage, shopify.com slash full coverage, cha-ching. Okay, do you know what's crazy? This is also a random side note. I was really, so over the weekend, I was telling my mom, I was like, I've been craving sweets really bad recently, like almost to a point where like I'm not, it's not normal. Like I already have a sweet tooth, but this is like where I'm like really like every like every day I'm grazing on sweets all day long instead of just being like once after like a meal. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I realized that I ran out of my magnesium supplement and I've been out of it for like a week and a half and I just forgot to order it on oh Amazon. My God. So then I was like, I'm out of my magnesium and I looked into it. Magnesium helps prevent sugar cravings. I need magnesium. Did the, is there something for salt? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. At least like with salt, like salt can be really, it's like you need it to survive. Like salt's good for you. But I've been having such bad sugar cravings. And like if you guys, if you ever feel like you're having bad sugar cravings, it could be your cortisol levels are high because mm. of stress. So like when you're stressed, stressed out, cortisol levels raise and you crave sweets. Interesting. So magnesium helps like kind of alleviate that. Yeah. So I've been, and I've been out of magnesium for like a week and a half. Wow. So I was like, oh my God, that's why I'm like going a little like sweet crazy right now oh my word i was and it's more than normal more than normal so if you ever cortisol levels are high you might need some magnesium in your life and it helps with sleep too which you learn also i struggle with day. as well yeah and it's just like a supplement it's not like it's like some like crazy intense like right scary thing it's just like a supplement like for your body interesting mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. well um my pit i have i think i have baby okay i have a couple and they're like baby like rapid fire mm, pits okay mm, rapid fire pits i like um, that first one is i got the new iphone 14 back when it came out oh uh -huh. and this phone and i just wanted to see if this is happening to anyone else i've never had an iphone die faster than this phone you're kidding and it's been since i got it so you know whenever you get a brand new iphone it typically lasts forever, lasts forever mm -hmm. and then it kind of wears down the mm -hmm. battery and then no this one since day one um it, it wears down i would say because i feel I film a lot of content on my phone right. um, with video camera, but I, I do that with, with all my past phones too. So this one dies like 10 times faster. It's so crazy. Like the other day I How was, it, last? it was, but I would say I have to charge it around two o'clock every day. Like I can't get through. Huh? A, yeah. I can't get through a full day and my old phone. I never had a, it would, it would die faster cause it was getting old, but like, yeah. so this phone sucks. Um, and I wonder if that happens to anyone else's iPhone 14, maybe they can speak to it. Also, second thing is I'm gonna battle Nikki tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, I'm fucking dead. Okay, okay. tell him, tell him, tell him. Back in like 2017, so this would have been hot drama. Hot fire, okay, hot tea. this would have been hot fire tea. They would have been like, she copied her uh -huh. and she copied her. Mm -hmm. So on Sunday, I uploaded. I did this video on TikTok and it was like, makeup you forgot existed. Mm -hmm. Turns out most people were like, we forgot you existed, but <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> it kind of turned on me. Okay? It, it turned, turned on me a little bit. It took bit. a dark turn. It ended up going kind of viral. I got like 5 million views. So mm. in my head, I was like, ooh, I should do a YouTube video yes, on make this. It longer. The TikTok gave me the, because the TikTok did so well and people uh -huh. were really interested in it. I was like, this could be a good tick, uh, good thing for my YouTube channel. Yeah. On the same day, two hours apart, me and Nikki upload the exact same video. It was so random. I gagged. I gagged. I, even I gagged. I texted Laura. I'm like, I'm screaming because I'm scrolling on like my thing. And make it before I exist. Make it before. I was like, <laughs> how is this on like the, like within like an hour or two apart, the same exact video from influencers from 2016, 2017. How crazy how? is that? That's what gagged me. That's what gagged me. I can promise you guys. And we guys, know Nikki's a fan of the show. Okay, I got it. Okay. Nikki be listening. Nikki so what's that? We're going to be having Nikki on the next time she comes to the U.S. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. period. Period. But anyways, I was just, I was cackling. I, I saw comments on my video and I was like, wait, Nikki uploaded the same video. So I went to her channel. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, this is so crazy but i'm just saying like back in 2017 this would have been drama honey <laughs> like this drama channels would have been like <laughs> laura, who's copying who laura, laura leach did it again laura leach did, did it again i did it again 
Um, so now we typically film, I've typically filmed my videos six to seven days before they go live. Uh, I'm sure Nikki's is weeks out. So there was no way for us to copy one another. It was a coincidence. I thought it was hilarious. It was so funny. Loved your video, Nikki. Um, that would have been drama in the past. And, Mm. um, that's my only pits. That's hilarious. I thought it was funny. That was hilarious. And even the pit is like, it's a funny pit. It's it like is. A, Didn't I text you? And I was yes. like, baby, tell me how, how up in a roar would people be oh, yeah. if this happened? This is 2024, yes. so people like, don't really care copy, as much. How dare you copy. Oh my God. It was, but it was really fucking funny. I know. Because I was like, what are the odds that two creators make the same video from something back in the past the same day within an hour apart? It was almost like a one in a million. Yeah. One in a billion even. And she's in Holland. Literally. Even crazier. Even crazier. It was insane. I literally was shocked when I saw it. I was like, how is this even how possible? Right how, literally. I know. Shocking. So as you can imagine, my audience was shocked and there were so many comments and I was just like, let them roll. Let I mean, no one was saying anything negative. No, yeah. They were they were like, holy shit. Crazy. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very interesting. I mean, that's not really a pit. It's just like, it's a, just funny like a funny thing, thing. that happened. <laughs> <laughs> What's your peak then? Uh, my peak is that, oh, we had a launch at Minimum this Friday. Ooh, ooh, so... Ooh, ooh. What'd you launch? Sometimes, okay, we launched a ton of new clothing. That was like our main launch, like new clothing. clothing okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, for springtime, it was a spring launch. So the, my, the universe, let's do makeup is actually the universe. She did me a huge favor because we have this launch and it's dropping oh, on Friday. Okay. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, she's doing her engagement photo shoot and she got our minimal LA body oil and she decides to use it in her get ready with me for her engagement shoot. And I'm like, watching and yeah i was literally like oh that's so sweet like i'm sorry but like me and les like i adore her and love her but like i don't know her on a deep personal level you know so she wasn't Mm -hmm. just doing me a bone she genuinely enjoys our product throw me a bone she enjoys our product and i don't know it's so cool just seeing her use it i just was like as a business owner you know manny i know know, it's just like "Ah!" Like, like, i'm an influencer too but it's still I'm jumping for joy, okay? I'm really excited to see that. I'm like, yeah, and actually so beautiful on her skin, like mm-hmm. incredible. So um, she posted that video right before our launch, and she sent literally hundreds and hundreds of people to our website. So, oh. yeah, and it, like, also got eyes on our new launch because yes. we just happened to launch the at the time she too. posted, and her video got millions of views. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, this girl probably has no idea what she just did for my small business, but I just want to say thank you to Lusty Makeup. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I know sweet. she didn't do it to, like, do me a favor you no, know totally. what i mean she, she was being genuinely genuine. just was using it mm-hmm. but you know you never know what you can do for a small business so That's i just so fucking sick like me. which is also another reason like why i feel like we've totally been like let's use small businesses like we wanted to promote and give 100%. more life to businesses in some capacity because it really is like yeah you we know what it's actually like and we what know it feels like. we know and she is a small business too and just to say before mm-hmm. i just want to say before she used my body all I bought her clothing from her small business mm-hmm. and I wear her, af- her is athletic wear and mm-hmm. I wear her stuff. I have it. I wear it. I've tagged it before then. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I didn't just buy it just because she supported me. I love her. I love her content. I actually already reached out to her to come on the podcast and she told me next time she was in LA, she would come on. So I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. You know, we love a, a good guest. Like we love a we good do. guest. We really do. And we so. try. And I reached out to her before she used the body oil too. Even the, and like yes. so that, it just makes it even more like <laughs> yes, yes, genuine, like yes. very sweet that she did that. Yeah. And then it's also like really to me, what's really cool is that like when a creator or someone like just uses their stuff because it's part of their routine. Yeah, and that's just why I was like, oh my god, and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god. I was like freaking out. Yeah, like I created something that be, has become part of your routine. And you know that's what's crazy? crazy? She's like a mom blogger yes not blogger like a content blogger. creator but like ha- does mom stuff yeah. i fell in love with her through her cakes she's oh, also she cakes? a professional cake maker and she makes those big three tier like insane cakes she's like a pro at it so i guess she did that before so that's how i fell in love with her I'm was through so her damn that. cakes and does yes. she still do cake videos too yes killing them and she makes like the most insanely talented so it's like i don't know she's an influencer with talent <laughs> you know and they're hard to come by and they're so hard to come by <laughs> Baby, so. in this economy they're hard to that's come how by. i fell in love with her content is through her cake making because i'm obsessed with food content yeah of course like that's so sickening though and the fact that yeah. she's support, like that's so sweet i know less that's I so know. nice it was just a very big blessing, so yeah. I really appreciate it. I love that. That was a huge peak, and it was more of a highlight of my week than 
you could probably imagine. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because it's like, I mean, it's like real. It's like, yeah. Someone genuinely supports you, loves your stuff, loves your products. Yeah. And support you and brought people to your website uh, and they bought stuff. On our launch day. Like, so, that's crazy. you know, oh, I was just like, oh my God. So, this one I was like, I feel like the universe is like doing me a good a one, solid, a solid, yeah, you good know? Karma Unless it's the universe. <laughs> and by universe, you mean less. less. Yes. Yes. That's what I mean. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's, yeah. a, that's a really good peak. Yeah. That was mm. a good peak. What about you? Mine was probably going down to San Diego to visit the fam. That's so special. But also, my birthday's on Thursday. <laughs> uh, honey, I hope you're ready. <laughs> what? what do you mean? <laughs> Your last gift came in today. We're so cel- you guys were celebrating this week, Manny's birthday. I'm so excited. I'm 33 Ooh. on Thursday. They were telling me on my live today old. that I'm 37, and I was like, "Can and you?" you like this. <laughs> I did go like that. I like, know the face is so well. I'd be like, "Can you guys like give me each year to let me bask in instead of like rounding Assuming, up? No, literally three or four years. <laughs> no, hey, forty year old. Yeah, it's literally. Like, damn. I was like, God. Give, give me my Some time give me my and years. they're like it says on google you're 37 i'm like you're no, a lip no it doesn't they were looking like, up no, the wrong laura lie. lee okay i was <gasps> the, the one from tiktok yes too. Got i it. think it was her mm-hmm. i was mm-hmm. like guys <laughs> different one they were literally battling me like i'm lying <laughs> <laughs> you're like no i'm gonna no. enjoy these fucking years while i can yeah exactly that is crazy but yeah it's, it's very it's weird like i feel like every year gets faster and faster and it does way. um but I will say, like, I used to really fear aging, like, a lot. Like, a really, like, a lot, a lot. And I was like, I don't want to get older. I don't want to get old. I want to die young. Um, but as I'm getting older, I'm, like, becoming more appreciative. And I feel like I get better every year now. Mm-hmm. Whereas before, I felt like I was like, oh, I'm the best version. I'm the best version. But I feel like every year I get become the best version even more so than I was the year before. You're no longer naive enough to believe you are your best version. Yes. And you're so knowledgeable Working now and aware that it just gets better and better and better. And there's yeah. so much more to grow and learn from. Like, I wish I was like how I am now in my 20s. Ugh, like, hindsight's, I, imagine, hindsight's 2020. Imagine the things I could have like done. I like, know, the, you power, know? the power, the, the, the thing, the, just yeah, just knowing and like being able to maneuver all these different fa- facets of our life yes. professionally. Professionally, I was a wreck, honey. personally, like I was a wreck. Everything, like everything every was in flames. Mm-hmm. I'll be I, running like the fucking. I feel like I, in my twenties, I was just trying to catch my breath, and like mm-hmm. I, I had no big master plan or visions. You know, like Same. now I, everything is a vision for me, and I'm able yeah. to slow down and visualize what yes. I want out of everything. A vision board, a vision, if you will. Yeah, vision. <laughs> like I love that, but I completely agree. So yeah, that's that's happening on Thursday. We're gonna go to dinner. It'll be a cute little day. So on fr- on Thursday, wish Manny happy birthday, but also full fam. If you're here oh, yeah. on Friday, <laughs> they will go not do and throw a happy birthday there too. <laughs> you're so right. You guys won't even see this until the day after. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm excited. But let's go get in rapid fire. This episode of Full Coverage is sponsored by BetterHelp. How's your social battery right now? Are you drained? Are you bursting with energy? It depends. (laughs) (laughs) It can be easy to ignore your social battery, um, but then you tend to spread thin at social gatherings. So what's the right amount of socializing for you? This is something that therapy I find is good for to talk to a therapist about. Social energy, social batteries Mm -hmm. are such a real thing. And there's so many different things that affect us in our life that we may not even realize a therapist can help us with. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like a really good thing about therapy too is about self-awareness and therapy really helps with that. I've been in therapy multiple times in my life. I'm a huge advocate for therapy. And I, I've i always went when times like I was kind of going through the gigs and I feel like it's like really kind of honing in on things that I didn't realize were going on. And then it helped me in the future. Like just like, just for example, having self-awareness in a social setting, in your social life, like actually knowing what's going on. And it really does help so much. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash full coverage today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash full coverage. Thank you to Bond Charge for sponsoring this portion of full coverage. I don't know if you guys have heard of Bond Charge before, but they are a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life in every way. And they have this red light face mask that I have been really enjoying. Now there are a lot of red light masks on the market, but this one I feel like has been really good. The cool thing about red light face therapy and what red light does is really targets wrinkles and fine lines, eczema, migraines, acne. I am acne prone and 
I'm fine lion prone as <laughs> <Me> well. <too. laughs> so it's really, really exciting to be able to have a red light mask therapy that literally you can put on for 10 to 20 minutes a day watching TV and it works really, really well. I use it every single night whenever I'm watching TV right before I go to bed. It's so easy to use and it's just something you have to be really consistent with, but you know, it works over time. The cool thing about it too is that it's easy to return in exchange if you do not like it and there's a 12 month warrant on all red light therapy devices. You guys can go to bondcharge.com slash full and use code full to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash full and use code full to save 15%. All right, all right. First, okay, guys, we got to get into P. Diddy. <laughs> oh, my God. The P. Diddy thing, honestly, it's taking some turns that I was not expecting. I didn't know how intricate the story with P. Diddy was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, like, I wasn't ever like, oh, I'm obsessed with P. Diddy. Like, I'm not. Same. I'm just not that kind of girl. You I know was. I, mean? I like P Diddy when he was Puff Daddy, and I was yeah, really young yeah. growing up, really yeah. young. And then P Diddy, I don't even know what that's about. I, honey, but I the know. P Diddy situation, like, so he's recently been getting his homes raided mm -hmm. by Homeland Security mm -hmm. um, because of a producer. Yep. Do we have like the verbatim? I think we have Let's like an actual verbatim, verbatim specifically about. This is about, a sticky situation. It he is, is sticky. denying all allegations. So, so this is all this alleged. Is alleged. By the way. Uh huh. It turns it to alleged. Alleged. This is alleged. We will not be clocked. Um, okay. So it says here, federal agents with U.S. Homeland Security raided two of the rappers' homes in Los Angeles and Miami on March 25th as he faces a string of varying accusations. But the shocking raids came a month after a lawsuit filed by New York music producer Little Rod that accused Combs of being a leader of a criminal enterprise that could qualify as a widespread dangerous criminal sex trafficking organization. So that, because Little Rod made those accusations, mm. that's what sent federal agents to do the home search. And the thing is, like, um, Little Rod had said that he, he was essayed by P. Diddy, and that's kind of what I think started his quest of being like, oh, I'm going to expose him, like, he was assaulting me um, and it became like a full thing where now it's like almost like cracking the case on P. Diddy in general. And a lot of people are kind of like, you know, these old videos coming up with like Justin Bieber when he's 15 and everyone's like, this is creepy as hell. Like, why is he spending 48 hours with P. Diddy? And like people think that like Justin um, has been, you know, abused by him as well. And mm -hmm. like that one audio that was leaked, mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. crazy mm -hmm. with Meek Mill. It's with Meek, mm -hmm. right? It was with Meek Mill. And like they're saying allegedly. that they had, allegedly, of course, um, that they had like a potential, you know, relationship and things are going on with them. And it's like kind of showing how the industry as a whole is like so honestly kind of crazy. Yeah. And how his um one of his employees just got busted for carrying, you know, drugs on them when mm -hmm. they were going to on a, on a flight. Mm -hmm. Like so he's like basically his mule. Like basically they're alleging that P. Diddy was going on vacation somewhere and he has someone else, a mule, carry his drugs so he can have drugs on the vacation. Mm -hmm. But not him be on him. Not him be on him, which the guy did get busted and arrested. Um, it says the producer Colm worked for Combs, which is P. Diddy. Mm -hmm. Which is the producer, by the way, is Lil Rod. Um, the guy who is making the making allegations. The, uh huh. They work for him between September uh, 22 and November 23, and he claims that he was sexually harassed, drugged, threatened for over a year. And I really think this whole thing, like, I feel like Cassie, Cassandra Cassie, mm -hmm. she busted this whole thing open whenever she did her lawsuit accused of sexual assaulting her, beating her, demanding her carry a far, uh, firearm and all those things. Now, she, he settled that case really quick and mm -hmm. she went away with that. You know, I think she got a lump sum and she it was just like, out. but it opened the door for a lot of other people to expose him and that's when Little Rod came out. So then now you have that and now you have him undergoing all this stuff. But you guys, this stuff is like, it's as crazy. you dig deeper, it runs so deep. It does. And like, I don't even think we could even talk about enough here. Like, it's just... It runs so deep. There's so many different things and it's mm -hmm. very like just even like it's like almost like this tree of like these branches that go out of like P. Diddy and then like these branches of all the things that he's in, all the businesses he has and like them raiding his home. Like he has like a charter jet businesses, uh, like house um, security business, like these really random things. And, and another one of his charges is that allegedly he records these sexual encounters that are without consent 
And that's just saying a bunch. Uh, and you. that's just another um, thing that gets added onto the case of like, oh, like people, women, men both complain that it's like things have been happening when he records it all. It seems like anyone that comes in contact, works with, or is an association with P. Diddy gets involved in mm -hmm. this hurricane of a world that he's created. And it seems like he has this hunger for power yep. and he uses it through SA and mm -hmm. like a lot. And this is a lot of the, and the mules, uh, uh, like, the mules. Uh, firearms and drugs, like mm -hmm. so many things with firearms as well. And it's crazy. The amount of, male rappers that claim that p diddy essayed mm -hmm. them as well as women on top yeah. of it and it's like a lot of the male rappers are coming out but a lot of them are not and they're like denying it mm -hmm. because they don't want to be caught up with having sexual relationships with p diddy right so all this allegedly is coming out i mean he's denied obviously me also denied it all too that he's like that was exactly me. so it's kind of like of course i feel like i to me i'm like of course you're gonna deny it like this yeah. is like such a clusterfuck and so freaking intense and you don't want to be like low-key blacklisted mm -hmm. um in the industry so i was like i feel like he even if it was i just don't think that he would want to admit it mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. but it really does feel like the the door the pendulum has swung completely open like cassie i'm telling cassie, you everybody mm -hmm. was so mad at her because they're like girl you could have like taken him down and you just settled i'm like but did she because it turns out she opened the door for everybody else to expose him and now look he's getting his home raided by federal agents so Homeland. where and is it, he like now? Where his sons are outside handcuffed like well, it was crazy whenever the federal agents raided jen shaw's home like mm -hmm. whoever's in the home they just handcuff him put just aside yeah. so they can can't take anything or hide you know what got i mean it. got it so um, they can't physically i learned grab. that through that because she was like they handcuff my children but apparently if you are That's under federal normal. investigation that is normal mm -hmm. and like it's it's crazy that the reason that he was getting the house was getting raided is because of the producer being mm -hmm. like he he also has a a trafficking ring mm -hmm. and it's like like this is crazy it's the if this is all true i'm literally going to freak the fuck out oh yes because right now when we we're doing more research on it when we were downstairs me and like this like the whole time like literally being so gagged there this could are, even be a thing. you guys, there are a lot of things that are public if you look online. Like, there are a lot of recordings because apparently Honey. P. Diddy, w allegedly, P. Diddy Literally. would record anytime he was doing things to people. And so, a lot of that is leaking online. We're not going to put that in the podcast, no, obviously. It's too, it's, too, it's too much, I but disturbed listening to the we audio. ran into some of it, and you guys. It is Literally, I was like shocking. this, my mouth on the actual ground. Yes, it's shocking. But um, so. if you guys want to do more research on it, obviously you can look. But like the the whole situation is very, very dark. Honestly, it's very dark. Our next one is too. Oh my god, the darkness of Hollywood is getting exposed. Well, good. Quite on set. Good. Quite no, on I know, set. Thank god. Tyler was saying he has a good point. Quite on set is a documentary on the Nickelodeon show, all that, and a couple of the other mm -hmm. shows Just that like they the had going on in that time. Child <laughs> actor situation. It's kind of the Me Too of children. It is. That was such a great point that Tyler mm -hmm. had made. Mm -hmm. It really is the Me Too. Like it really, again, is now busting the door open of like how horrific the situations were in the 90s mm -hmm. and to early 2000s of what child actors and Nickelodeon, Disney, things like that were going through, specifically in Nickelodeon, because obviously Dan Schneider was involved. Um, but the actual documentary is so sick. Like, it's it's really well done, of course. Like it's a really, really good documentary, but it's just like watching it, like I felt, I felt physically sick. Yeah. It's crazy. There's four episodes, I believe, and there's going to be a fifth one coming out on April 7th. Um, so it's basically walking through a lot of the child actors, what they went through on all that. Um, they actually, you know that they had asked Amanda to be part of it, and mm -hmm. she like had, was like, uh-uh. And Amanda's parents mm -hmm. were like, mm -mm, we're not part of it. We don't want to do it. Um, but basically it kind of follows the story of Dan Schneider, who was a, a, a producer. Um, high exec high producer. Exec. And he kind of is the one that created the, the big shows, like the ones that have like a lot of accolades, the All That's, the Drake and Josh, the Amanda show. A lot of shows that were really... The biggest Sick. of the big, Zoe honestly. Yeah. Um, the biggest of the big of Nickelodeon. and really blew Nickelodeon up to be to the heights of <laughs> Disney. Like, this is when things were happening. So people really respected him so much. because they were So like, much you did so this. that Disney had to end up tr to try to be like Nickelodeon because mm -hmm. Dan Schneider had made Nickelodeon so big. Mm-hmm. 
And mm-hmm. it's really weird watching this because for me and you, this we're the age of those kids. So we yeah. were watching all these shows are on yeah. my core memories. And just to know what was really going on behind the scenes is so sickening. No, when they did all that and they're like talking about like the fear, like they had to do like the fear factor stuff and all that. I don't remember any of that. The fact that they had to deal with I that. I do. It was crazy. I, thought, I, don't I guess I didn't really. I'm like a little kid. So what do I know? Yeah. But I'm just watching it for entertainment as the rest of the kids were. But I guess you don't really think about what those kids are going through. That they're actually getting tormented. Yeah, tormented. Like you don't think like that as a little kid. But as an adult, you definitely damn should be. Absolutely. And so basically like the doc, it just exposes like what life on set was, how Dan Schneider was to the employees, to the kids, how there was it did not feel like a safe space for children to even be like, oh, I'm not comfortable doing this. Like if they had felt any kind of way, they'd be like essentially ridiculed and uh, potentially fired. Like So yeah, walls. the way Dan would run the, he was like always there on the set dictator. and he was the dictator on set. And the thing is you did what Dan said. And if you, you or your parent who's supposed to be on set with you has anything to say about it, any complaint, you would be fired. Mm-hmm. So you knew better. And like the, a lot of the parents didn't want to come to Dan and be like, Hey, my kid, I'm not comfortable with my kid doing this because they would fire the child. And then the child who's, you know, 14, 13 devastated, devastated because their mom got them fired off the set. So, so he like Dan used with that. The parents. He was also a misogynist. Oof. You know, he he power horrible. played on women and made them do really horrible things. He made women the writers, the women writers, his the women writers massage and producers and you know they work there give him massages all throughout the day as he's working. That man needs to be put in jail. Literally, it was crazy. He's like sick. I couldn't believe that situation. But then you know as that's it gets going, worse. it gets worse. And then you get fucking get to the part with like. The, that one runner, mm-hmm. that one showrunner mm-hmm. with that one um, that sent photos to that girl. Yes. And her mom was like low-key a disaster. Oh, a disaster. So you have a showrunner, which is someone who basically from behind the scenes, they're not producing the show, but they're keeping in track with what comes next. So the show keeps running smoothly. Mm-hmm. He was a full-blown CP. CP. Read between the lines. Child, Child P. G- child child P. P, okay full blown and i found it very interesting and like parents need to be so aware cps often find themselves in jobs that are surrounding children and places that surround children so any type of place that there's a lot of children cps tend to find themselves there they're trying to get in there because they're cps exactly so you have to be Extra on guard and diligent Mm -hmm. when you are in a world. Anyway, so this freak sends a child. Photos of himself. Photos of himself through an email. And the child shows the mother. And the mother goes, you know, we never went back on set. We quit after that day. Mm -hmm. But I didn't report him to anyone because I didn't want to look like a bad mom. And I was literally like. So fuck everybody else's kid, right? (sighs) Like, fuck everybody else that's in danger of this man who's still on set. Fuck them just to make sure. But then he gets fucking rated his place gets rated you guys when they talked about him like their place getting rated i was so gacked at like because of the things that they found in his house the amount of photos that they found oh my God. the amount of his own journal is oh. what really spooked me to like the core what he, he was about, looking for yes what he was looking for and he, he literally made a a written document of like what he wanted as a CP mm-hmm. and like what he would do he's like you know like the thoughts are happening again thank goodness i work with with kids it was literally like I felt like even listening to it and like watching it, I felt so uneasy. Mm-hmm. Um, and he ends up, of course, go, um, getting locked away. But it was really crazy that that had happened. And then that was happening on the same set. And then you go over here to the Drake situation. Who's also Nickelodeon. Who's same also kids, Nickelodeon. same set. You have another, another CP. CP outside of the showrunner. You got another guy. He was the pickle guy on the Amanda show. And he would come in with a big plate of pickles and make you eat pickles. Yeah, that didn't have anything weird to no, do. No, right. That's not freaking CP. strange. He was the worst of all. No, he was literally like. I, I don't know if there are levels to being the worst. No, yeah, you they're know all what just I mean? Terrible. But like hit, that story got the worst of all. I think that story was the That one is. was, that one like really, I feel like broke my heart the most. I yeah, think, all the, that of, one. Of it all because of I, I didn't realize obviously that drake was the kid that put that guy away back in like the early 2000s because his name was sealed mm-hmm. then it became unsealed mm-hmm. and they found out that it was actually him the entire time mm-hmm. and the sad thing too is with drake's dad who knew that this guy brian there was something off about brian like he, they knew that it was weird that he was so like Enthralled. infatuated mm-hmm. with josh or Drake, sorry, with Drake. And um, he was like, you need to get away from him, you need to get away from him, get away from him. And then 
that guy put a wedge between Drake and his father, and like Drake fired his father. Master from the manager. manipulator. Master manipulator. Um, and the dad was like, "Okay, well, I just want you to be happy as long." Like, and told the mom, told everyone, like, just make sure that they're not together ever, like, because it, like, there's something weird going on. Turns out, there was something weird going on, and they were together in multiple situations, and. Drake kind of does a recollection in the show of what happened. And it's honestly the most graphic. Disturbing. And disturbing thing I've like ever seen on a show. Like, like I've never, I feel like they don't ever really go into like detail, but like I feel like this was like They went on detail. detail. And I was literally like horrified truly from the bottom of my fucking soul. Um, and he just talked about like what, like the worst things that could happen to a child from a CP is what happened to Drake from this man. And it wasn't even his parents have uncovered it. It was his girlfriend's mother. Mother. Okay, so explain him, this to me, Manny MUA. So if your father's like constantly battling this guy, separating mm -hmm. the two, because he sees this guy wants to be near his son, and yes. he's like, I see the T C P potential. So the dad's like, get away from Drake. He's not spending the night at your house. You're not coming to our meetings. Yep. Stop coming to all his his guitar shows. Like everything. So the dad's doing that. So then the guy is like, Hey Drake, your dad's kind of gonna ruin your career. He's the worst. Get rid of him. So this guy is like making Drake's career. He's getting him all the. He's getting him mm -hmm. all these opportunities, right? Yeah. Well, he. So he's because he's very connected. So he's 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 making sure he's connected in the industry, um, because he's a very connected person. Yeah. So Drake's able to use this guy yes, to yes. get places with mm -hmm. his career. Is what Drake wants. What his dad wants. So, but his dad is like. You need to stay back from my son. Yeah, I exactly. see you. Mm -hmm. So then Drake's like, I want to split up from my father because this guy's telling me my dad's a bad guy. And oh, and then people made him seem like he was a homophobe. Yeah, that? yeah. Uh -huh. He was like, um, like if if they would say anything, he's like, no, you're just like being homophobic. Mm -hmm. Like you shouldn't probably even be here since you're a homophobe. Yeah. Because he had concerns. Concerns. Crazy. For That's his crazy son. to me. So then Drake went to live with his mom after the guy convinced him that his dad's a bad guy and he should get away from his dad. Okay. So Drake goes and lives with his mom. And the dad tells the mom, Drake is coming to live with you. Do not let this man near Drake. Mm -hmm. Something is up. Mm -hmm. I don't trust him. He wants something with Drake. Mm -hmm. Don't. The mom's just like, fuck it. And Drake pretty much starts to live with this guy in it's, L.A. She, the mom like, like doesn't want to go pick him up she in L.A. She doesn't care. She doesn't, she doesn't care. care. And the dad has already flat out told Drake's mother to keep him away. Like, he wants Drake. And the mom did not care. It was crazy. Explain that to me. She I, also wasn't a part uh, of the documentary, I noticed. Oh, I wonder why. Oh, I wonder why. Yeah, because you, you fucking... Like, let your son and just get, said, let your son ha like let it happen with this psychopath you who let you it were happen. told you were told who and this warned. guy is. Mm -hmm. So Drake gets a girlfriend. He goes to he's hanging out at his girlfriend's house. He's not as interested with this man anymore. He's like, I'm growing up. I have a girlfriend yes, now. Yes. The girlfriend. So he canceled. What's the guy's name? Brian. He cancels plans with Brian. He's like, Brian, I'm not going to Disney with you. Brian loved to take Drake to Disney, as mm -hmm, you know. Of course. CPs do. Mm hmm. So Drake's like, I'm not going to Disney with you. I'm hanging out with my girlfriend. The Brian guy freaks out. He calls the girlfriend's house like 17 times. So the girlfriend's mom is going, why She's is like, hmm. a grown man attacking Drake for not going to Disney with him? Drake said it took the girlfriend's mom about 30 seconds to figure out what was going on. Yes. And Drake's own mother didn't know. A Goodbye. Fool. A fool. I'm like, I, I believe this is not factual. This is my thing. I think the mom knew and didn't care. Like, she knew something could be going on yeah, there and just, and just did, turned a blind eye. She she, she could have easily also in her head been like, oh, well, he's just like, a, he's a little star. Like, he's going to do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. And doesn't and just like, let it be. But it's like, that's not what you do as that's a parent. That's not what you do as a parent. You're involved. Yeah. Like, you're involved For as a, a parent. For a reason, because he's a Especially child. A child. Yes. Yes. So the mom got involved. Um, so uh, no, the, he the got exposed. Mom. Oh yeah, the, the, the girlfriend's mom. mom. Yeah, the girlfriend's mom. Got girlfriend's involved. mom gets involved, puts him in therapy, tries to get Drake to out the guy, and Drake will not do it because mm -hmm. he's scared. Mm -hmm. He's scared if he outs Brian, his career is going to be over. Because remember, Drake's brainwashed, and so then um, Brian gets exposed. Oh no, because then the wire. The wire. Remember he's the freaking wire. Oh my god, no, it gets I, so no, crazy. I literally like I was like when I'm watching, I'm like <laughs> <laughs> because. But something in order to happened get him. to get him on the wire. Well, I finally, I think that he had finally, like, realized, like, this is, well, for something Drake, he was, like, his to, time. What to the Brian guy. Well, no, like, Brian, well, Brian was just saying, he's like, are you wearing a wire? Like, remember, like, during it, he but was, like. why did Drake get the police involved? Something happened there. Oh, he he, okay, okay, okay. He just snapped. He just snapped, and he was, like, it's time to, like. 
expose him. Ex- he's like, I have to do it. Like, this is So this he is crazy. broke down. He mm. cried. He told his mom everything. And his mom had the police on the phone in minutes. So I was kind of like, wow, that's shocking. Your mom had the police on the phone in minutes whenever After she kind of ne- like. Negligence. Ne- yeah, the negligence was Hello. crazy. So it got crazy. So yeah, he ended up bringing a wire. He calls Brian. He's like, hey, like, I just want to talk about what's happened between us. Like, I feel like it's been fucking me up. And essentially, Brian admits to everything on the call. Brian even goes, are you wearing a wire right now? No, he's like, you're not recording me, right? You're not recording me, right? And Jake's like, no. Like, no. Like, no. So that happens. They end up going to trial. He gets locked away. The even more devastating part to me, like when I was watching it, was when they talked about like how the dad had told them, well, when Jake calls the dad and he's like, oh yeah, like Brian got put away for being like an assaulter. And the dad was like, oh, thank God we got away from you. The dad never knew. When I tell or, you I wanted time. to cry, I when know, I tell you I wanted hard. to cry, because I was like, oh, thank God we got away. And, and Drake didn't have the heart to tell him mm-hmm. that like he was the one that actually put Brian away because it was him that was getting assaulted the entire time. Mm-hmm. So then finally, of course, um, the dad finds out that was actually him. And he talks about it on the show and he's just like, I... I never recovered from it. Like, it's like, I've never recovered. Like, it's been the worst thing in my entire life. And like, I'll never, he's like, I'm still not healed from it. And it's been 20 years. And he was breaking down. And I was literally like, it was hard to watch. It was really it was hard really, to watch. It was really, really hard to watch. But I'm, I'm glad it's happened. Because then again, like all now all these stars, from, like childhood stars are like coming far. And like, you know, what? it was horrible. And like, I think that when things like this happen, it really creates change and protection. How do we know that this people. isn't happening right now? Exactly. How would we know? Well, the thing is, like now we have, you know, social media. We have things that we have more expose things. A lot of kids can become stars online as well. Like mm-hmm. there needs to be. See, I think that there needs to be protection for kids on social media mm-hmm. because their parents can absolutely like hello, look at family channels. Uh, yeah, freaky. I'm fully convinced that like the version, the now version of that could be like family channels exploiting their kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not saying like, you know, that essay is happening or whatever, but definitely exploitation and like mm-hmm. the kids need to be protected because like who's protecting the kids? Mm-hmm. Let's say they're making it like the parents are making all the money from the kids. Where's the kids money? Yeah. You know, I know we have that. There's a, there's a law And then you have the California. Ruby Frankies. And then she yeah, had the a family Ruby. channel. Exactly. Abusing her Frankies. children. And I know in law, in California, there's a law that you actually have to put 15% away for your kid if there's a if they're a child star or whatever. Yeah. But it's only 15%. That's crazy. And the parent still gets everything. crazy to me. So it's like, and a lot of places don't even have that rule in the, in the United States. So it's like, there needs to be better laws implemented for kids mm-hmm. and just in general mm-hmm. when it comes to like child stars because- the, the parent can be the abuser. Yeah. It is, it's not even just like that could be, you can find, you know, CPs everywhere, but like the parent could be the abuser to that mm-hmm. kid and they need to be protected. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It's really sad. It's absolutely crazy. You know, on the seventh, like we said, the, the last part of it comes out, but it's sad to see like what, what happened with Amanda Bynes. She like, she talks now as if she's like a shell of herself in comparison. Yeah, she does. Like she's trying to heal. Like she's yeah. just trying to heal. I think that's why she didn't want to be a part of it because it's like what happened happened. These people are exposed. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to. She's like, what else am I, I don't gonna know that expose? maybe she's not in the mental capacity to, for that kind of spotlight. Cause look at Drake now, you know, it's really crazy. You know, Drake got in trouble himself for underage, an underage girl. I don't remember. Yeah. He went to court. Recently? Uh, a couple years ago and he addressed it on the show cause he had to address it. What did he say? He, um... Oh, my God, Drake. Drake. Laura, I'm thinking Drake the rapper. Oh, my God, no, Drake on... Drake Quite Bell. on set, Drake of Bell. Of course, on Drake Bell. Bell. Absolutely, yes, I knew all. I knew about that, like, with, you know, disc, like, talking with the minor. And you know what's crazy is that, like, I feel like a lot of people, what I've been seeing, are saying, like, not excusing his behavior, but, like, are giving him grace because of what happened to him as so a So they're child. like, this is why you are the way you are. There's mm-hmm. an explanation. But that, he also was somebody else's hell. Like mm-hmm. Drake himself was somebody yeah. else's hell because I did read up on that because Ty kept saying that I was like I've never heard of this and I he addressed it on the show so I ended up googling yes. it and the girl's statement was pretty rough. Um, granted, and that was she, a, it was a communication thing. Um, it was like a texting well, thing. Well, she did not have proof of the other things she claimed happened. Got it. She got it, got it. only had the text. Proof, got it. proof got it. of she didn't have, but she did state that more happened, but it was alleged. You know. It's so sad because it really Mm -hmm. feels like it's just a cycle, like a Mm -hmm. vicious cycle of someone like an abuser, like abusing someone and then they become an abuser to someone Mm -hmm. else. And like, it's this really, really sad psychological cycle. Um, And, you know, seeing what happened to Drake, it's kind of like seeing him, you know, abusing someone else. It's like, oh my God, it's like, it's the cycle 
continues because he was a child when mm -hmm. it happened to him. So it's so very people like, have given him a lot of grace for that because mm -hmm. he's come out with his story. Yes. But I will say him, I appreciate him. I don't think the documentary would have allowed him to graze over what his part is. There was his, no way. They're like, you're going to talk you're about gonna this. You're going to have There's to talk no about it. Way. Right. Because I think, and I, cause I think it shows like the, the, the progression of what could happen mm -hmm. if like things, you know, don't like become treated internally. Right. Because, you know, like, I bet like. You know, obviously, if nothing happened, like if things didn't happen with Brian, like this would he would have never done that. I'm mm -hmm. sure, like that could have psychologically fucked him up. But also, Agreed. like therapy and like all these things, like if things were to happen, like you have to seek help and make sure that you know bringing people to justice. Yeah, and it would help, and it a lot of times helps heal you inside because mm -hmm. you know that someone got justice for the horrible things that they did. Right. So, but it's crazy. Yeah, and, I, and I'm glad that Drake came out with his story because yeah. one, like he just opened the biggest can of worms that Ooh. possibly could be open, which is amazing because you have to be brave to do that. You just do, mm -hmm. you do because of what it's going to open up for you and your world. And then become, all your all your skeletons come out because like what's done is done, and now Drake's living his life, but now it's like reopening this wound to the public mm -hmm. has to be so difficult. But at the same that was time, years ago. it helps because what happens is is Kids that this happened to see the Drake Bell sit down on HBO, this documentary, and do this. So it makes them brave enough to do it. So, mm. like, I was really glad that he he did it. He didn't have to do this. I know. You know? So I was really glad that he did it. But I could not agree more. And it's like, I'm glad that he's getting grace. But at the end of the day, he still did yes. inappropriate things as well. So yeah. like, that can't be forgotten. But Agreed. It's, it's nice to see him acknowledge that and be like, I feel like this is what it could have been. And I'm trying to move forward in the best way that he that he can, can, but it is, it's, and it's crazy too, because like even like that guy Brian, like getting all the letters of like support from people for the judge to sway the judge's oh, opinion. Oh, I love that they exposed everybody's a ass. Who got the, they got Ashton Kutcher to Mila Kunis. They, they literally got Ashton. <laughs> yeah, and Mila. they did. No, that was crazy to me as well. I was like, oh my god, they like showing that. Apparently, in the court system, like their his entire side was full, and it was just like Drake and his mom and his brother yeah, on his side, on and his like side. no one else was on his side. Everyone was against him, and he still was able to like be. And this guy did enough. get shit for time, and he ended up back on children's shows on in Disney. no time. On Disney, he went on to Sweet Disney. Life. He went to Disney. I said this. Disney needs to be held responsible too. If Nickelodeon's Obviously. getting held responsible, y'all y'all hired the same guy after he got out of prison. You're like, well, he wasn't on his, but he didn't get a background check. It wasn't on the thing. Okay, you're still Disney. You're still responsible. Absolutely, you're that big of a company. You have to like, be. You have to on. be diligent and responsible, especially when you're working with kids. Like you have to make sure that everyone is checked and appropriate. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much to Shopify for sponsoring this portion of full coverage. You guys, cha-ching, that is the sound you'll be hearing when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell, online, in person, social media, and beyond. And listen, if you think it's going to be a total headache switching over your platform to Shopify, I promise you it's not. They've made it so easy. Also, my favorite thing about personally using Shopify, I use it for my businesses. Manny uses mm -hmm. it for his businesses, mm -hmm. is how user-friendly it is. It's not complicated at all. You're not going to get in there and in the back end be confused whatsoever. So stop leaving sales on the table. Switch your business to Shopify and discover why millions trust Shopify as their all-in-one commerce platform to build Build, grow and run their businesses sign up today for your one dollar per month trial period at shopify.com slash full coverage all lowercase that's one month for one dollar at shopify.com slash full coverage shopify.com slash full coverage cha-ching okay next up is lizzo T it's 20 little, minutes ago 20 minutes ago. I want you to read the. I got it. Yeah. Manny's got the IG it. story. Lizzo. So obviously she's going through quite a few lawsuits herself. And so she makes this IG story basically claiming that she quits. Manny, take it. Here from we here. go. And, and I quote as Lizzo. I'm getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the Internet. All I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little bit better than how I found it. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views being the butt of the joke every single time because of how I look. My character being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespecting my name. I didn't sign up for this shit. I quit. So that was a very obviously like vague thing. But I mean, it was... You know, she talked about like it was not vague, wanting. but it was very not vague. It yeah, was like, it was like vague both. in the way of like, I quit is this what you mean? I quit was vague. 
everything else is kind of like more like okay you're obviously getting criticized for the way you look you're tired of getting criticized and like i understand where she's coming from in those aspects like damn i would be exhausted mm -hmm. if i was her from just constantly getting you know just do you think all attacked. this has to do with her appearance i think a lot of it does have to do with her appearance to be quite honest i think that you know at the end of the day a lot of Americans, a lot of people just in general, just don't want to see people who are unhealthy and like that are fat. And I think at the end of the day, like that's a huge thing and it's real and it's not, not something that you can like really skate over. And there is like a stigma. Mm -hmm. Like at the end of the day, I, I truly believe that. Like I think that that could be a, a part of what Lizzo deals with because like she gets so shamed for it. Yeah. All the time. Mm -hmm. And you don't see people who have a healthier body shape get shamed the way she does. Right. So I think that there's definitely something to it. And I am not dumb enough to think that that's not a, a thing. But I think that has a lot to do with with that getting ridiculed. Um, you know, in her words, saying that people lie on her name about things that have happened. The lawsuits. The lawsuits, everything. So I was very kind of like, holy shit, she quit the internet. She's quitting music. I thought when she said I quit. I was feel like, like she alluded to I'm quitting everything. That's when what I When you felt. say I quit, period, it's a pretty clear message. Yeah, just like I quit. So then, twenty minutes ago, us right now, literally us right now, and like I was like scrolling and I see Lizzo after she's standing, making every a statement. entertainment platform out there has quoted that you quit mm -hmm. and you're not going to do this anymore. <laughs> she's like, I don't quit. She's like, I quit accepting hate. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I was like Lizzo. I like, I didn't know that that's what like I thought it was a much more like. I quit. Well, like, I quit, period. period. Yeah. So I was like, I was it like, oh, felt shit. very like, obvious what she was yeah, saying. Yeah, and like scary. Like honestly, very kind of like, oh my God, like sh is she like okay? Like, you know? And then it's like, I quit letting people hate on me yeah. and letting people. That's what she you know, meant. No, the narrative. That's what she meant. I feel and like. And I was just kind of like, oh. It was so kind of a crazy that. way to go about things. Who am I very to judge? Intense. I'm not. It's a very, that's all like, girl, you put out there, you quit. And then yeah. you come back here like, well. You're like, I quit. Okay, listen up. That. What I meant by I quit was I quit my haters, but I'm still going to be out here doing my. Doing music, uh, doing, doing what everything. I want to do. Totally. I think so. I think that, I think she had to clear that up though. Because if she's going to make music, you can't be like, I quit. <sighs> And then you oh, yeah, she 100% had to, to clear it up that. because of how it was obviously taken. You got to clear it up. You have to because, like, at that point, it's kind of like it It had looked like she was quitting, like, something like like music or her career or the like something much more serious. So then and it turns out to being, like, I quit accepting hate and, it, you know, like, letting people talk negatively on me or whatever it might be. Which, like, you know, in itself is, like, I'm glad that she quits that for herself. But I feel like the message but in that was way, skewed. The it was definitely skewed, and it was definitely uh, pointed in a different direction. It was. Happy for her. I'm to, happy she's not those quitting, you Same. know. I am, too. I'm very happy for her. But it's, like, what a what a unique way of going about <laughs> saying I quit. Unique. It was very a unique, unique way of going it about it. It was very unique of going it away. Was. Going about that way, being like, I quit. I quit. But I quit hatred oh and you're like mm, but that's not what you that said. did not sound that's not how it came across yeah because the people of course everyone's kind of like oh my god like what like everyone's freaking out but it ends up being well, at least she knows she's got some fans out there uh, honey honey praise me right mm -hmm. okay our next topic is gypsy rose is getting divorced after three months of marriage to this man i can't believe it's so fast I what can. happened to that D being so good? Also, I mean, listen, I say I can. I definitely wasn't rooting for the downfall. I, <laughs> I was hopeful, but it just seemed very erratic, like their relationship. You know, wasn't she in prison when they yeah, met? Yeah, like that's how it started. It was, it was like, like a like, prison relationship. Boom, really quick married. So in my head, I'm like, mm, this is like some really quick moves. And Jepsy Rose hasn't like had time to figure out who she is on the outside right. and like be free because uh -huh. she was with her mother. And then that happened. And then she went straight to prison. So it's like there was no time Where's for her, time? her to her digest time? her life. And then this man's involved already. And so he's on the outs. So maybe that D wasn't fire. I don't think the D was fire, babs. I feel like she needs to be able to like have time to find herself. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you jump into a relationship or you get into a relationship, like mm -hmm. you give a lot of yourself to your partner because that's just how a relationship works. Like you give and take. Yeah. But you need to be able to sit with who you are and figure out who you are as a person first. And then that's when like the best relationships form because it's like you already know who you are as a person. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually like, I'm not saying that I'm happy for Gypsy because obviously divorce is terrible. It is. But I do wish the best for her in the way of like hoping that she continues to find herself. Yeah. And really continues to heal from the situation because I don't think like 
that's something you can just easily heal from just yeah. in general oh um and just constantly making herself better and like i wonder if being in the public eye was a hindrance for them as a relationship oh, like him sure getting messages pressure. her getting messages the pressure like i can't even imagine that kind of viewage on me yeah you know what i mean and the thing is gypsy rose like everyone's like oh my god i love, I love the gypsy oh my god she's amazing and then everyone's like fucking gypsy like they're trying to cancel her and then now it's like this so it's like i don't it's too hard to even this keep is up what the with. internet does though mm -hmm. and I, I watched this girl's tiktok it was like 10 minutes long i don't even know how i got through it with my attention span but i did and she basically was breaking down the whole psychology and like wave of like you know how like everybody eventually gets canceled if you get big enough online uh -huh. like you eventually get in some type of Trauma. something that tears you down and mm -hmm. she was basically explaining that like people build you up to tear you down so they build you up they follow you they follow you they love you they love you they see you come up and that's where the problem starts to take flight whenever they see the new car and the house and the mm -hmm. new life that they provided for you so then the audience this is the girl breaking this down is like, I don't like this new version of you. We created it. And so the audience gets this power in taking it back. Mm. So they start to cancel and like find problems yeah. and dig deep. You know what I mean? For that. Cause they want to take the power back in that person's life. And then it was talking about how the influencer now becomes this really private person. Doesn't share anything anymore because of that. Mm -hmm. So it was really tumultuous. A vicious that, cycle. That's literally what happened to gypsy though. Uh -huh. It really did. It was like verbatim. What happened to gypsy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That literally is, and like, and now I'm sure she's gonna probably be more private post divorce. It's like textbook. So she was it's basically textbook. saying, like, the mathematical equation of what happens with an influencer or a person like Gypsy, who's more of an inf kind of an influencer person, yeah, you point, know, yeah, yeah. in this world, like the equation of how it works out. And I was like, wow, that has literally happened to everybody, like in that way. Like it's so accurate what she was saying. So like it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot it of really sense. It really does. It makes a lot of sense. Well, I hope for the best for her. I really do. Because I, I, I know. She's just been through such a horrible beginning of her life that i really want the best for her. and if divorce is the best for her then like bring the so divorce on bring the divorce on just so that she can heal and move forward and be like the best version of herself because also fame like doesn't help like because the pressure so the, one the pressure two it's easy to have people blowing smoke up your ass mm -hmm. like you're doing nothing wrong when in reality you could be totally doing things wrong mm -hmm. but not realizing it because people are yes people around you everyone's so a yes that man. could really be an, a hindrance for her as well like so when she makes a mistake people that call her out for it, it's kind of like oh shit like i didn't even realize because no one in my life has helped me mm -hmm. get through something like this right you know so i, I just wish the best for it because it's really sad it's really sad okay our, another sad thing our, oh my gosh one after the other oh my god chance perdoma Chance Perdoma. What the fuck? He got in a motorcycle wreck and passed away. Now, he was the star on Gen V, mm -hmm. and he also was in Sabrina. So he was honestly a up-and-coming, amazing, talented actor. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I watched. We both have watched Gen V and, and Sabrina, Sabrina mm -hmm. and I really like him a lot. Um, so to see that he's passed away from a motorcycle accident at 27, I think. Oh, my God. Like, that's so devastating. He was so young and so promising and just like had such a bright future ahead. And to see yeah. him pass away is like, it really is kind of like, holy fuck. Like the mortality is it's real. So real like, regardless of real. who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So true. And it makes you kind of like, oh my God, like it makes you think about your own mortality in a way. And like just being safe and like honestly freaked me out because Aaron, like my youngest brother, like will ride motorcycles sometimes. No. And We've all been like, stop, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But he like, we'll do it. Do you know how many mangled people in my life that I know and it's mm -hmm. all from motorcycle, motorcycle wrecks? Mangled or dead? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm well aware. Those are the options for motorcycles. Motorcycles mm -hmm. are death bullets. At one point, Tyler won at one and there are very few things where I'm like gun ho like no, no. no negotiating, nothing else. And it was the motorcycle. Mm -hmm. I was like, you will not. And Tyler, both of his parents were Harley riders when I met no. him. Yes. Both of them. Mm -mm. Like they it's, are it's, death traps. They are. I agree more. I could not agree more. And I'm always telling Aaron, I'm like, you cannot write. You cannot write. You cannot write it. Um, but at the end of the day, like, people are going to do what the fuck they want to do. Like, I can't control anyone. But um, it's just like this just goes to show another reason as to why, like, motorcycles mm. are, like you said, like little death traps. They are. They are. So scary. I cannot agree more. I would never, never. ride one or never let my partner ride one. None of that. No. Like, it just, it's, mm -mm. it's so scary. Life so, is too precious. Rest in peace to Chance because what a young talent mm -hmm. taken away way too soon. I know.
It's really sad. Um, next up is Shakira. So controversial opinion on the Barbie movie. Mm -hmm. and well, she's getting wrecked. Is she? She's getting like literally fucking roasted. And I didn't know that she was gonna get roasted the way she is, but she's getting absolutely roasted for her take. Cause she took her two sons to see Barbie. Okay, so she took her two sons to see Barbie. And that she said that her son, you know what? I'm gonna read the quote verbatim. Yeah. I'm gonna read it verbatim. We're about quotes today, okay, people. We I wanna I wanna give I wanna give the quote for reals. So this is the quote that she gave. Okay, so she says they felt that the Barbie movie was emasculating, and I agree to a certain extent. I'm raising two boys. I want them to feel powerful while respecting women. I like pop culture when it attempts to empower women without robbing men of their possibility to be men, to also protect and to provide. I believe in giving women all the tools that trust that we can do all without losing our essence, without losing our femininity. So that's like part of the problem. So raising men to be powerful typically leads into um, very interesting situations. If your goal in your child's life is for them to be a powerful person, it's an interesting take. It's a very interesting take. It's an interesting take. Like my goal for my son is for him to be happy. To be powerful. powerful. Like and that's a, masculine. That sounds to me like you wouldn't like the Barbie movie. The, because the, I think that's her saying these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what what like eight year old knows what emasculating is. Exactly. And I'm like, if you can't see the Barbie movie as trying to level out female and males as equals, mm -hmm. and that's that's an issue for you for women to be equals with Mel in every aspect. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's to me. crazy. I like honestly, and I like Shakira, so I'm really annoyed and really sad about this because I think that she missed the whole point of the. Barbie I think movie. she missed the whole point. Like how? Like and first of all, but it sounds like she, from the quote, it kind of seems like she w wants that toxic masculinity. No, she does. Like it so that's seems why, so like why she's on that side of things. So then why watch Barbie? Yeah. You're going to watch Barbie with your two male sons, a movie that is all about women empowerment. With, with It's not, the point of the movie is not to demasculate men, by the way, not at all. It's about female empowerment. And equalizing. And equalizing what the, you know, what the standards are for men and women. So that's what the real, the real tea is. So for her to watch it and be like, it's demasculating. And I'm like, you're not, you don't get it. And the thing is, she doesn't, she never has given me anyway, like a girl's girl. Mm -hmm. She's always been like a guy's girl. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because she is like, you know, the male, the male fantasy. She is the male fantasy. She is the male so fantasy. She, and she knows that. Yeah. So she's always played into like, I'm the most like sickening, feminine, like bodied girly mm -hmm. because men want that from me. So mm -hmm. she plays into that caricature. But this is like when issues arise when like you can't see something for what it actually is. Yeah. And what the messaging really is. And it's really sad to see this take and for her to be like, it's they so thought it was sad. emasculating. It's they didn't think there's that. no way a child said, they didn't think that. you know what? They're eight. Yeah. I'm emasculated watching this. Oh, OK. That doesn't well, make any sense. It sounds like they were told that maybe. One thousand percent, or she just like they said it themselves. They thought it was weird. Yeah. So no, you thought it was weird. no. You thought it was weird. Yeah, and you thought it was weird that it was. <laughs> you guys, I've seen Barbie three times. Like I've literally watched it three times, and as a man, mm -hmm. I do not feel like they're trying to take away from me. Yeah, and anyway, I feel like it's about raising the bar for women and raising them up. So like. To me, it's really crazy yeah. to even have that as a take mm -hmm. and really shocking, even as a man myself. It's crazy for women to have an issue with women <laughs> finding their voices and the finding fuck? their equal place in this world. That's crazy for me to understand, understand as women. Erin, and she's only 20, my niece, mm -hmm. she's only 20. So she's a young girl. And she told me the other day, she was like, we were just chatting on the phone. And she was like, one of my old friends, I saw her like commenting and liking a post on Instagram. Instagram that was it was very religious but it was like around eastern it was talking about praising your husband because there are like the power of the household and like the woman was like down on her knees like like very like worshipy to the husband and Aaron was like it wasn't just the post that made me want to unfollow her it was like oh so this is your mindset for women mm -hmm. and see that's the problem for me and like me and you can never be friends if that is how you think women should behave at any level like that should be praising, praising men? men praising men because they are above women and they are the king of the household you know and so I was like that's so crazy that you're only 20 years old and I know how much I knew at 20 and it was crumbs and like 
you know well enough to know that is the biggest load of brainwash bullshit that I've ever heard. Brain rot. Brain rot at 20. And I was like, first of all, I'm proud of you. Wait, Second of all, block that bitch. Block that bitch. <laughs> no, do you know what's actually really crazy, Laura? This is a complete random side note, but this just happened to me two days ago on Sunday on Easter. So I'm with my cousins. So my cousin is a lesbian. Mm -hmm. I'm gay, lesbian. She has a sister who's not, and my brothers are not, like, but we, you know, are LGBT. So we have a cousin that apparently posted on her stories and they showed me on Easter that was like what it's like being trying to teach your kid in 2024. And it's a photo of someone like blocking the rainbow from like their child. And it's like the rainbow's coming in. They're like shielding it. And my cousin posted that. Oh. So she responded to it. Damn, she be was your like, own people. No, literally be your own people. So my cousin, that's not a lesbian responded to her. She was like, not you, um, not you, um, She's like, oh, she's like, I think I'm have to unfollow you from this. Like, this is crazy. And so she was like, oh, so then she responds like, we can have different opinions, cousin. And then so then it because I'm there and we're, and I'm like kind of like, oh fuck no, like I obviously like escalated the situation. So and I'm like, <laughs> no, like let's respond, like let's like have a conversation about this. So we we're like, not only does it show that you're being a bigot towards the LGBTQ community, which your literal family is part of, not by choice, that's just how we are. Mm -hmm. Um is fucking crazy. She's like, no, I didn't mean that. I just mean more so no, about you like, no. no, I didn't mean that. I mean, she starts backtracking. I fucking hate when people do that. I'm like, like no, no, say no. it with your chest. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean that. Say it with your chest. You said what you no, said. I didn't mean that. And so we're like, no, like it was absolutely inappropriate. And it's so crazy. She's like, no, I meant that about the trans community. <sighs> so then she responds, how crazy because today's the trans day of visibility in America. <gasps> <gasps> Laura, I was so, I, for me, like, in the gay world, as you know, chosen family, that's a thing. I don't claim this person as my family member. Like, I don't even, I don't even follow this person. I don't even know who this person is, to be honest. They're a cousin from, like, a different part of my family that I don't even fuck with anyway. Okay. So, for her to be saying these things and, like, to see, like, that's how she really feels and posting on her own stories, she ended up deleting the story because she was like, oh, like, and she apologized for everything. And I'm like, at the end of the day, that's your thing thought process and you still like, meant what you, you meant, meant what you whether meant. you deleted you can it or apologize not. because we're calling yeah, you out yeah. and she's calling you out in that moment yeah but you still meant it with your entire chest and you post on your story what it's like to be to a parent proclaim, in 2024 to proclaim to proclaim that you hate the lgbt mm -hmm. community and you oh specifically trans people so i literally was like and just reminded me of that just like that kind of like that crazy take that people of brain rot have I'm like, how is this even impossible? Like, how is this even happening in 2024? Like, when it's supposed to be the most like trying to be equal with one another pa possible, and like like this, for example, with with Shakira, not feeling like it, what it seems like she's not on par with like women and men being equals in their own different capacities. Mm -hmm. And it's like we're we're this far in 2024, and we can't all like just like coexist. It kills me is some of the backtracking is like you posted it and now so that like, you uh, forgot uh, uh, about uh, your gay family members and now that your gay family members are here, mm -hmm. they're here now. Now it's time to be like, oh no, never you guys. Like, no, you guys no, no. come on. You guys are great. She's like, no, the, the it, gag that the part kills that me. gags me and she's like, we can have different opinion, opinions, cousin. And I'm like, that's not just a different You don't like, want me to have rights. No, I was like, that's completely like, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, you can't just be like, which have different opinions. Yeah. About what? <laughs> about rights like that people should be having in America and like trying to make sure that your kid's not LGBTQ as if it's your choice. Like, you have no choice. You don't. Your kid is either you born that or the not. Like, you, you have don't a choice. get the choice. So to me, it was just crazy that I like, and this just happened. I was like, oh my God, this will just unlock that memory again. Yeah. And I was like, should I, should I message her? And I was like, do you know, like with my cousins there, I was literally like, should I be a fucking cunt? And, like, start, like, should I start going in on her? Like, what should I do? And they're like, no, no, it's fine. We already did it. But I was just like, <laughs> we are, no, we, we already, already had it. We had it. And I was just like, this is crazy. Like, I don't claim this person as like my cousin. Like, I'm like, yeah, we might be related by blood, but you're not my family. But it's crazy. It's like, you know, you know, if you feel that way and then, but you know, it's like, I'm ready to proclaim it across social media. It's kind of like another level kidding, to it, kidding. in my opinion. It's, it's too like the end. It's like degree. a whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have a personal thought about something and I respect everyone's personal thoughts. Mm -hmm. But when you start be making your personal thoughts so loud and you try to take other people's things away because of your thoughts and spread is that. crazy. If you're trying to get the word out and spread that to others. Like that's another level that's to different. it. You it's know what I mean? Level. That's another level to it. Mm, that's the part I have a problem with. Yeah. You know? So yeah, I thought that was crazy. Wow. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, I have to say this. This is too much. Wait, tell me about the bar that doesn't you allow guys, you. You guys there, there's a video going on, on, um, TikTok that's going viral. And it's about this place in, <gasps> sorry. You just <laughs> <laughs> I had to 
to get out a big one or else it was going to keep coming. It's going to keep coming. So there's a bar in Los Angeles that has said. You told I'm me in it was New York. LA. Oh. I'm in New York. Yeah. There's a bar in New York that has said that they are banning any Aries from coming into their bar because they have noticed that the people that start fights and issues that happen have been mostly Aries. So they've banned Aries. It checks out. No, it does not <laughs> check out. As an Aries, I'm like, how dare you? But the thing is, uh, naturally or very like collectively, Aries have been seen as like an aggressive sign. Like they tend to be the most aggressive, one of the most aggressive signs. So it's kind of like, I'm not an aggressive person really like mm-hmm. that. But I know a lot of Aries who are aggro. I would tell you if you aggressive. were. I'm not, right? And you're not at all. Like, at all. I'm, like, quite passive, actually. Actually, way more passive than aggressive. Very, very chill. So, but it's it's definitely a big thing where Aries can, like, like they're known to blow up because they're a fire sign. (laughs) Like, they can blow up. So, the fact that this bar is preventing Aries from coming in, I think it's hilarious. Because it's, like, this is, like, low-key the funniest marketing I've ever seen. But if someone's an Aries, they can't go. It's kind of like J-Lo doesn't allow any of her dancers to be Virgos. That that tracks. It does track. That tracks. <laughs> that tracks. That tracks. It does, it actually As an does Aries track. Virgo combo, that tracks. Girl, we're getting banned everywhere. Shit. <laughs> what the fuck? No, I just thought that was so crazy. I'm like, I can't believe a bar is banning people based off of their sign. I'm like, what's next? That's sick. I'm like, next they're gonna be like, you know, Tuesday's only water signs. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> they're about That's to lose some so business. Red. <laughs> yeah, but I thought that was really funny. I was like, this is as an Aries, like, how dare you? Well, we're definitely going to that bar now. You're gonna go, I'm gonna be hating from outside the club because I can't even can't get in. Get in. Mm. I'll be out the window. <laughs> You're gonna the window like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking a Red Bull on outside. Like, mm. y'all have fun in there. Y'all stay safe. Y'all stay safe. But um, that is it for today's rapid fire. We hope you guys enjoyed our episode. Ooh, Don't a lot of shit. Oh, there was a lot to cover. Honey. A lot of depth in this one. A lot yeah. of deep dark. Yeah, it was a deep dark episode. To be honest, if anything breaks between now and when this goes live, feel free to flood it in the comments because we love to see your comments. Mm-hmm. We love the conversation and we love whenever you guys join in and mm-hmm. keep the story updated. That happened to us with the Kate Middleton situation. Oh my, god. Yeah, oh my god! Literally hours after we went live, she sat down and we were like, "What?" And the thing is, you know what's funny? Like. Sometimes we'll get comments that are like, you guys are too far behind on a topic or something. But like, for example, we film on Tuesdays, like for Rapid Fire. We film on the Tuesday. Afternoon. Afternoon. We film on Tuesday. The content can't even get over because it's so much footage with three different cameras till like maybe Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. Wednesday morning, our editor edits Mm -hmm. the entire day. We get it on Thursday. Approved. To go over the content. We only have that much time from like Thursday It's just a two day window. It's a two day window that we have. So it's not like we're like going so far based off of like, oh my God, like we need to have so many days in between. It's like, that's what realistic is what is possible. We don't do live shows. Like we're not doing a live episode. So that's why when we have the information, like that's what we do it based off of. Trust and believe we wish that we we try to make it faster. But we wish we're like filming on Friday, long Friday. So we could be like very accurate Mm -hmm. with things. And we are a lot of times, but there's that two day window that sometimes throws us off Mm -hmm. and just know we hear you. We see you. We see it. We're, but but we also are kind of like, well, <laughs> well. <laughs> like this is how if you explain it, like that's when like if footage gets over, that's when yeah. we get our edits done. We get them on thir- Thursday midday to evening, so we mm-hmm. only have that window to even approve the episode, and then we go live Friday afternoon. Right. So it's like we don't have a ton. We're doing the best we can. We, we are doing the. We are fighting for a lot. But we do appreciate you. Love very much. Wanted, I wanted to explain that because I was like, well, I'll, I'll get comments. We'll get comments like that, and I'm like, let me just explain. Yeah. Like the actual time process of it, because it's like. We don't do lives. Yeah. Like we're not doing live episodes. You one know? day. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Maybe one day or a live episode. <sighs> but that is it for today's episode of Full Coverage. Mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you are already. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye, guys. Bye.